Hello there, my name is Dr. Carlo Ojet, Emergency Physician, and in this patient education video, we're going to talk about the relationship between atrial fibrillation and exercise. Exercise is the key to living with atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation should not stop you from pursuing a healthy and active lifestyle. In fact, atrial fibrillation patients can reap many benefits by pursuing an exercise program. Exercise can reduce the frequency and the severity of atrial fibrillation episodes in addition to lowering your blood pressure and slowing your heart rate. Of course, none of these means you should launch yourself into running a marathon after years of sedentary living. You need to be careful as you design your exercise program. Before you exercise, know that what kind of atrial fibrillation you have. There are basically four types of atrial fibrillation, persistent, paroxysmal, vagal, and adrenergic. Knowing which kind you have affects how you should approach your exercise routine. Let's talk about persistent atrial fibrillation patients are nearly always in atrial fibrillation, since it's usually best to exercise when one is not suffering from an episode these patients will need to be especially careful to stick to gentle, low-impact programs. On paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, patients have episodes that come and go. Within reason, they can pursue just about any program they like if they don't overdo it. Then there's vagal atrial fibrillation. This one is when your episodes occur mostly during or after a meal or resting after exercise. This type of atrial fibrillation is related to the vagal nerve. For some people with this type of atrial fibrillation, exercise can actually help stop the episodes. And then there's adrenergic atrial fibrillation. This one is when your episodes occur mostly during the day and are normally triggered by exercise, exertion, or stimulants. In this type of atrial fibrillation, the adrenaline hormone is the trigger. For some people with this type of atrial fibrillation, exercise can trigger an episode. How to choose the right exercise program for you? It's important to start by focusing on light to moderate programs like brisk walking, tai chi, or yoga. Make sure you don't get above 50% to 70% of your maximum heart rate. Calculate this by subtracting your age from the number 220. For example, if you're 40 years old, your maximum heart rate should be 220 minus 40, 180. And because you don't want to go all the way to that, you want to get to about 126 beats per minute. If you are on beta blockers, you might have to use what's called the board RPE scale as an alternative. Since beta blockers exist to keep your heart rate low, the board scale is a measure of perceived exertion. The CDC offers a lot of information about this, uh, but here's the bottom line. You should aim to keep your perceived exertion somewhere at 11 and 14 on a 1 to 20 scale while you work out. In other words, 20 is the most effort, 1 is the least effort, so you should be about 11 to 14. Avoid weight lifting because it can put a great deal of strain on your heart. Strength training is important, but resistant band training is safer and more effective in atrial fibrillation patients. Here's some tips for a more successful exercise experience. Be vigilant about taking care of yourself during your exercise time. This means setting realistic goals, staying hydrated, and watching for signs you may be overdoing it, such as getting dizzy. If you've been sedentary for a long time, start out slow. Pay attention to weather conditions. The last thing you want to do is to overheat and then dehydrate. Think about personal safety too. If you're on blood thinners, for example, a major exercising accident can be very dangerous, so make sure you wear protective gear and take the precautions to ensure you can get help if you have an injury that makes you bleed or you get hurt. Beware of overdoing your exercise. Pushing yourself too hard is the number one reason why exercise may become unsafe for someone with atrial fibrillation. 
Don't rely on monitoring methods or board scales alone. If you can't speak a full sentence without gasping for air, then you are overdoing it. Lightheadedness, excessive sweating, and chest pains are other danger signs you should be watchful for. You might feel like you're accomplishing more when you start to push yourself harder. But remember, even if you don't trigger an episode, your body will hit that wall. If you start associating exercise with pain and discomfort, you won't want to do it. And this least effective exercise is the one you never get around to doing at all. Remember, keep exercise fun so you'll want to do it. And don't let atrial fibrillation stop you from getting out there and getting active. Thank you for watching another video from DrER.tv.